Hi, I'm Jodie Hazelwood. This is Roy Dundee, and this is how we live with style. I run the Instagram account, The House Upstairs, which followed the renovation of our home here in Nottingham, which is actually a flat, so it's The House Upstairs. This is my little dog, Roy Dandy, who is quite the lockdown dog. He is three and a half. So originally this would have been a really large Victorian mansion, a really beautiful home, and in the 60s it was converted into three flats, quite frankly really badly, so they ripped out loads of original features, they covered up stained glass, they took out all the fireplaces. So we've really tried to put that personality and history back into the property. We're in the kitchen now, which is one of my favourite rooms. And we wanted a nun kitchen kitchen, so we didn't want it to feel very kitcheny and um, severe. We wanted it to feel really natural to the house. So we used tons of reclaimed items. This kitchen island was actually a gentleman's outfitter's um, storage in Cheltenham. It's so strong, it's oak, it's incredible quality, and I love the fact it looks old, it's stained, it's got loads of patina, and it has the most remarkably huge drawers, so, so good for kitchen storage. I never knew when we did a renovation that we would buy so much via Instagram. Um, the Spanish tiles are actually floor tiles on the wall here. I found from a guy called Maitland and Pote who lifts them off floors in Spain and then resells them and actually saves them because I think they'd be destroyed otherwise. I'm going to put this little prince down now because he's had enough of me. I love overly specific kitchen utensils and I like actually having it all out. I like how it looks and it means you can see what you've got and grab it easily. I also like bringing kitchen utensils back from foreign countries like this slightly weird a vegetable art peeler, which we actually use for roast potatoes. I bought that in Thailand. The other thing in this kitchen which is super practical is how we store the plates and glasses. I did have a vision of very swanky joinery for all our plates, but sadly our budget ran out at that point. So we use this commercial prone racking for all of our bits and bobs for eating on and drinking out of. I have this huge collection of Austrian plates and crockery. The reason I have this collection of Austrian plates is that one of my really close friends is a butler and he was working on a huge estate in West Sussex and they were emptying out a cottage that was abandoned and this entire beautiful crockery set was being thrown out so I acquired it and I now add to it by finding odd bits on eBay. I really love it. But that's enough for the kitchen. Let me take you through to the sitting room. But as we pass, let me show you my all-time favourite photo. This was taken in the 80s with my siblings and my mom. I remember the photographer coming. Um, it was a photography study in Birmingham about women and their children. And it has a lot of my favourite things in. A watercress salad, which we always had as kids. My mom's very good fruitcake. I love this photo. So we're in my sitting room now. We're very lucky that it's a really, a quite a big space. I knew that I wanted to do a vibrant colour on the walls. I'm always conscious when I use a strong colour that it's counterbalanced with something a little bit calmer and chic. I think when you lay out a room, it's really nice to create little cosy spots. We were lucky that we could create two seating areas in this room. This one here is for chatting, having a drink, maybe playing a game, and then we can see almost eight around the TV area, so it's nice to create those two little spots in the room. I'm actually sitting in front of one of the new pieces from my Ottoman collection that I designed over the last year. We're really lucky in Nottingham that it's the home of British upholstery. They're much softer than a coffee table. You can pile them full of your favourite things. And because you only need two metres of fabric, you can have something really special. I really like having a bar out so that guests can help themselves to a drink. It's cosy, comfortable, relaxed. They don't feel awkward asking for ice or glasses. They can just help themselves. I'm actually obsessed with 
every chair having a table and a lamp next to it. I think there's nothing worse than sitting down with a drink and nowhere to put it and you're kind of awkwardly stuck with the drink in your hand. And also you always want to be able to see what you're reading, so I insist that there is a lamp and a table next to every chair. A couple of years ago we went on a very raucous trip to LA, myself and one of my best friends. It was uh, a very memorable five days, but we went on a Sunday brunch bar crawl to all of the kind of famous hangout spots. And we went to the Chateau Marmont, the Beverly Hills Hotel, the Sunset Tower, and I decided to grab bar mats as we went, and I framed them as a little kind of random memory of a brilliant, brilliant trip. One of the favorite things I actually own is this fossil I found when I was eight. We were walking in the Cotswolds and I threw this stone, it broke open and there was the most perfect tiny fossil. It's travelled with me to every house I've lived in since I was eight. It might even be the reason why I did an entire geography degree. So this is our hall stroke dining room stroke lobby, stroke where we keep our vintage bits when we bring them into the house and we've been at flea markets. Um, this originally was for different rooms that we ripped out because we wanted to create a really large entertaining space. We acquired this table from friends of ours who used a reclaimed factory top from somewhere in Eastern Europe and then put it on legs for us. When we cleared out the hall, we firstly discovered that it was a huge space, but we also took out all of the 60s suspended ceilings and found some amazing stained glass, which was a very good day on the renovation. But I did know with this level of space that we needed some really big light fittings. I was scrolling Pinterest and saw these giant, giant rattan lamps, which after a lot of internet stalking, I discovered were made in Malawi. Much to Ollie, my partner's bafflement, we got them shipped here in a container. When they arrived, the builders let us know because we were off site that they couldn't get them through the front door. So they had to take the front door off to get them in. And again, we actually, our electrician actually um, left the site and never came back on the day they were hung because he hated putting them up so much and we had to find a new electrician. But I think it was worth it. They look really good and they're very dramatic. We've got a really large print of a Slim Aaron's photo over the dining table. It's of some gorgeous girls on the beach in Saint-Tropez. When I worked as a yacht stewardess in my late 20s, I spent lots of time on this beach. Sadly, not sunbathing, but just dropping guests off in the searing heat. So that's a nice memory of a really fun time. If you've ever seen Below Deck, you'll know what it was like to be a chief stewardess. Sadly, I can't reveal most of my stories because I signed an NDA, but whatever you can imagine, times it by 10. When we started renovating the hall, there was maybe seven layers of wallpaper and 10 layers of paint, so it took days and days to strip it. Eventually, under all the layers, found the original Victorian frieze that they must have put up when they built the house, as well as all the original plaster. It's such a beautiful color. So we've actually kept this along the back wall. Just along here, we've got a teeny tiny downstairs loo where I did a big, big splurge on Pierre Frey wallpaper, um, but luckily a downstairs loo, you need maybe one or two rolls, so that was perfect. So we're now heading into absolutely my favourite room, which is our bedroom and dressing room. Believe it or not, we found these rooms looking for a tiny hatch in the wall there. These were just bare rafters and no one had been in here since Victorian times. It was just literally the eaves of the house. So I wanted this room to be really pretty, really calming. We're up in the eaves of the house. It's actually quite quiet up here. It's a little bit like an English country house hotel, which I really like actually. It's a bit of a retreat up here. We found these really fab sketches in Bordeaux flea market. They were two euros each. I think they were from a house clearance and it makes me so sad that someone's family member just abandoned these when the artist, whoever their family member was, was so talented. We went for this really narrow 90s style aluminium framing to take a bit of the drama out of them. I think it works really well. 
I was conscious that this room was just a bit too pretty. So to kind of deprissify it a little bit, we put in these brilliant posters of someone's 1940s vans for their job, which they were obviously very proud of. We got these in a Belgian flea market and I think they just takes the prettiness down a little bit. Through here is our dressing room, but you can't quite see that yet because it's complete tip and we haven't finished it yet. But in this little corner is my studio where I do my designs for the Ottomans and work for interior design clients. So this room should have technically been our bedroom, but we were really lucky to discover our bedroom and dressing room through there in the eaves. So this became our snug stroke bedroom sitting room, which is very spoiling and I feel very lucky that we've got it. It's a really multi-purpose space. So under this helmet is a projector, so we can watch films and TV in here. We've got a fire, which is lovely. Bath, which is very nice. But the best secret in here is that if you go through these doors, we have a sneaky little coffee station so we don't have to argue about who goes down for the coffee in the morning. So we have a little fridge, we have a kettle, we have a coffee machine, and we'll just have coffee up here in bed before we finally make our way downstairs in the morning. It feels really spoiling. We've also got a little bit of wine in the fridge for the bath as well. We have two guest bedrooms in this house. The one downstairs on the first floor is the VIP room where we put like our grandparents or parents, which is really sweet. And we've got an entire wall of maps, which are all memories of places that are special to both of us together and individually. And then on this floor, we've got a second guest bedroom, which is a little bit of a compromise. We ended up making guest bedroom stroke laundry room. So I would say it's probably a good room to sleep in if you've had a few drinks, so you don't hear all the noise. I found it really surprising how much stuff for the house we sourced on Instagram, but actually thinking about it, it's not that surprising because there's so many amazing creatives on there and the way that they edit antiques and vintage pieces means that you just have this perfect platform of gorgeous things to source, like these beautiful French sconces that I got from Wallace Antiques. Thank you for visiting the house upstairs and don't forget to subscribe to the Sunday Times style YouTube channel. <laughs>